Thank you. So thank you so much, Dr. O.T., for joining us today. Um, you know, we're here with you at Columbia University's African Economic Forum. Diamond Bank is one of our biggest sponsors, actually the Diamond Sponsor. So thank you so much for um, sponsoring the Economic Forum. Um, we hope that this, this will be the last of it. I know it's sort of this first time that we're working together, but hopefully um, you know, this will be the last time that we'll be sitting here together today. So you delivered a very, very inspiring um, keynote um, a few uh, minutes ago. And I'd like to connect with you about the evolution of your career. Um, you have built a career managing fast-growing businesses at uh, various banks, right? And you have been really good, or rather more so successful, at moving those businesses up the corporate value chain. There are a lot of you know, people here today that are looking to you and want to be like you, right? <laughs> um, what advice do you have for people who want to get into the banking industry, um, who want to be, but particularly those ones who want to be inspired, who want to sort of engineer changes on the continent? All right, thank you very much for the very kind words, and uh, I think you are quite generous. I think so. uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I've been in banking all my life. I graduated from school, I've read economics, and um, uh, joined banking. The first uh, bank I worked mm -hmm. uh, it was in a U.S. bank mm -hmm. called Citibank. Oh, really? Yes, and uh, <laughs> I uh, just immediately after my graduation, I did the one-year compulsory youth service. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, with Citibank, <laughs> and uh, I was retained, and I continued banking. So that's how. I made my foray into banking, and mm -hmm. uh, the rest is now history. And uh, this was uh, 1989, yeah. and I've gone through a few of the banks mm -hmm. uh, um, up to uh, the first bank uh, where I was uh, until 2011. Mm -hmm. I spent 10 years in first bank, by the way, I joined 2001, mm -hmm. and uh, I moved up the ladder uh, through becoming the assistant general manager to you know, uh, deputy general manager, yeah. then executive director. Yeah. And um, I used to oversee the oil and gas uh, business I, I at some I want to talk to you a little bit about that, okay. because you seem to have created a niche for yourself within yes. banking, yes. focus on energy. Yes. Uh, and um, so today, I uh, look after Diamond Bank, mm -hmm. of course, with a lot of my I like people. I you look after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because a lot of people are uh, involved. We have some 10,000 odd people uh, in the bank uh, and it's uh, been an interesting journey. Now straight to your question about uh, the advice I'll give people who want to be like me. Mm -hmm. um, it requires, uh, at the risk of sounding immodest, it requires a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and hard work needs to be focused uh, because you can also work hard and if it's not focused, it yields you nothing. Uh, so it has to be focused hard work. Um, it requires reinventing yourself time and time again. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot of uh, reading mm -hmm. uh, because you need to be at home with what you are discussing. Uh, and then it requires uh, um, ensuring that you have integrity uh, mm -hmm. because a lot of uh, people have fallen by the wayside uh, because they uh, let um, very little things distract them. Yes. Mm, and uh, you will find out when it has happened mm -hmm. that it's a very little thing. So you must uh, be straightforward. Mm -hmm. You must uh, ensure that uh, you are doing the right thing mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could make mistakes, but uh, once you make mistakes, uh, recognize that they are mistakes and quickly retrace your steps. Mm -hmm. uh, um, there's someone that said that our joy is not in our inability to fall, but in our ability to rise any time yes. we fall. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think it's uh, so important. Yeah. And then, of course, educating yourself. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, education is not necessarily when you come to a place like this, but of course, coming to a place like this is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happen to have been lucky to have come to this place, uh, and then I've been to Stanford. Yeah. 
I've been to University of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and then I did an, uh, an alumnus of the Harvard Business School. Well, class so, education. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, but these are things that happened over a long period of time. Okay. And, okay. Um, and I think it's important you keep educating yourself. Yeah. And I, I believe uh, that uh, once you have a couple of all these things, mm -hmm. and uh, most importantly, you also need to pray. Uh, oh boy, because, uh, yes, because you may do everything right and uh, still uh, hit what they call bad luck. Exactly. Uh -huh. exactly. Uh, some people are in the wrong places yeah. at the wrong time, yeah. and something happens and yeah. they are off. Uh, I can think of a couple of our colleagues who were in the banks that were taken over by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, I was in one of them at some point in my yeah. career. Yeah. And, uh, so just imagine that I was there at the time it happened. Yeah. And then exactly. uh, you probably stumble, you yeah. know, and then come right up again, yeah. depending on how you've organized your life. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you've touched upon a lot of sort of, you've given different nuggets of wisdom, um, some of which we've heard, some we haven't. But some of the ones that we haven't heard is about faith, right? It's about spirituality. Mm. Many people believe that, uh, you know, God shouldn't exist in your businesses, or at least you shouldn't you know, there's sort of two separate things. Mm -hmm. um, we hear it, I hear it a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Your business is your business, and there's no need to sort of bring spirituality into it. So it's really good that you touch upon, upon, upon sort of spirituality and, and praying, mm -hmm. right? Because ultimately, it sounds like that's what set you apart from your, mm -hmm. from your counterpart mm -hmm. who, you know, lost focus mm -hmm. um, at some point in time. What do you, what advice would you give to people who perhaps don't, who are not spiritual, right? Um, but at the same time are looking to, you know, looking to sort of become change agents, for the, you know, and, and, and especially within your sector. It, would your advice really be more so find something that centers you so that you don't lose focus? I mean, the one thing I know that centers me, and it like sounds like for you anyway, spirituality. So what advice would you give to those people? Yeah. Well, you see, the, it's a very tricky one mm -hmm. um, because it's, uh, anyhow you look at it, it's a personal issue. Yeah. So if you uh, decide that you are not going to be spiritual yeah. or that uh, God has no place yeah. in your life, that's your decision. Yeah. But I can tell you about myself. Yeah. And uh, I believe that uh, there is nothing I do that is not ordered by God. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's my belief and nothing can change that. And I uh, have seen practical demonstration uh, that okay. God exists and okay. God orders our steps. Yes. And then um, one thing that I would also not do is to force people to share the belief that I have. Yeah. Uh, but then I can tell you uh, that there are a lot of things that had happened in the past mm -hmm. um, where I would have gotten into trouble. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, even just mm -hmm. sitting there a little bit and offering a little prayer. Um, I see them turning around, yeah. uh, and that's for me. Yeah. Uh, for somebody who does not believe, yeah. uh, he will need to uh, ask himself how he got where he got. Uh, and then uh, sometimes you shortchange yourself by believing that you are a superhuman being <laughs> and uh, you can do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. then uh, my, by my upbringing, I know that I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me Absolutely. and that's what the Holy Book says so uh, so that's uh, how I live it okay mm -hmm. we've got one more question mm -hmm. um, it's 10 years since Columbia University has been you know sort of orchestrating this economic forum mm -hmm. and you know the, this one isn't even done yet we're already sort of talking about 11th year mm -hmm. what advice do you have for the university um, as we enter in sort of a new into a whole new decade, mm. right, of, um, of the economic farm. Mm. Well, thank you. I, I am coming in contact with the Economic Forum for the first time this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it is uh, life-changing, yeah. uh, particularly for people who s don't have opportunities of visiting Africa. Yeah. Um, so it's like uh, bringing Africa 
uh, to Colombia. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's uh, very, very good. And uh, yeah. there can be a better time yeah. than now and when Africa is in focus. Exactly. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, growth, GDP growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was saying that Africa, uh, some parts of, Af of Africa are witnessing 7% yeah. GDP growth, yeah. irrespective of what it means yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but the point is that there are opportunities yeah. in Africa. And uh, the focus yeah. of the world today yeah. is on Africa. Yeah. And a few uh, people, uh, the Chinese, understand it very well. Yeah. And they have uh, taken advantage of that. They still take advantage of that. Uh, so I think it's an important uh, program. My advice would be that um, you need to publicize this a little bit more mm. and you need to get more African countries interested and involved in it. I see uh, that there is a preponderance of Nigeria <laughs> in this, which is not bad <laughs> because uh, uh, anyhow you look at it, yeah. Nigeria still commands a lot of respect as the, uh, as the, in terms of population. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too sure there is any other black nation there has 170 million people. So it is a veritable market to, yeah. to look at.